We turn now to side one of Abbey Road, and um, six songs come together by John, Something by George, Maxwell Silverhammer by Paul, Oh Darling by Paul, Octopus's Garden by Ringo, and I Want You, uh, She's So Heavy by John. In that playing order, um, I will, in the next video, in the song Close Up, take a little closer look at Maxwell Silverhammer and I Want uh, you, she's so heavy, as well as Here Comes the Sun, which strictly speaking is on the first, is the first song on the second side, but we'll do it before we talk about the big Paul um, uh, second side uh, in the next video. So I'm going to save my comments on uh, Maxwell Silverhammer, and I want you, she's so heavy, uh, for that close up that, that follows in the next video. Uh, let's have a look, let's ha consider for a minute John's uh, song Come Together. Again, it's another one of these John wordplay. Uh, kind of tunes where he's, uh, this, the songs don't literally make any sense, but they put together things and interesting and fun of kinds of combinations. Um, it's further interesting that he uh, seems to have lifted a line from a Chuck Berry song and uh, Chuck Berry found out about it, you know, and you don't really, uh, you don't really not pay Chuck Berry his copyright royalties. And so uh, I think that what ended up happening, I, you can correct me on the, on the uh, um, in the forum, if 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 you know if you know the story more accurately than what I'm about to say, uh, but I think the way that they settled it is that John uh, told Chuck Berry that he would do an album where he would feature a number of Chuck Berry songs. Then, of course, if John Lennon does an album where he sings a bunch of Chuck Berry songs, Chuck Berry gets the publishing on all that. And so uh, that was the way they sort of settled this this little thing was for John uh, to record some of Chuck's songs as John Lennon the Beatle. And of course, sold tons and tons, and Chuck Berry uh, made tons and tons of money. Uh, the idea of a come together, especially the way uh, it seems like John is saying at the beginning, shoot me, uh, may be referring to, uh, to heroin, but of course, the way things ended so tragically for him in 1980, it now um, it's now kind of spooky uh, to listen to him sing those those lines at the beginning. Um, of course, it's uh, the wordplay here is very very much reminiscent of what we talked about earlier this week uh, in one of the earlier videos this week. Dig a pony, you know, um, and and also um, I've got a feeling this sort of wordplay kind of thing that goes back to things like happiness is a warm gun, uh, and even back uh, before that. It's a simple verse form, so from that point of view, it's a very straightforward, almost kind of blues-based uh, kind of tune. Uh, George Harrison, something uh, we already uh, talked about a little bit as an AABA form. Uh, we won't say too much more about it here, uh, except that it stands up pretty well to come together. And the song that follows um, uh, uh, something, uh, which is Paul's uh, Maxwell's Silver Hammer. That being a tune we'll talk about in the next uh, uh, close-up. I'll just say now that. Um, if you think about the sequencing so far of this first side, Come Together, Something, and Maxwell's Silver Hammer, three very different sounding uh, tracks, and not just because they're by three different songwriters, but in a way very similar to what they had done with the White Album and with Sgt. Pepper, and even going back to things like Revolver and Rubber Soul, we're getting a selection of tunes that all sound like in many ways they could be a different band. And we've talked a bit about that kind of that wide variety uh, of uh, different um, sounds and stylistic approaches the Beatles were able to get away with early on because they were the Beatles. Now, of course, they've been so influential that a lot of groups are doing this kind of thing. But we see that as a consistent feature that, that takes us that shows us the continuity with their earlier work. Uh, following Maxwell Silverhammer, we get Paul doing Oh Darling. Uh, this one very clearly in a 50s style. And so this brings us back to the idea of Paul, um, as we talked about on the White Album, sort of going for earlier styles. Um, uh, that's another way in which he was sort of trying to get back and trying to get back to his roots and that kind of thing. This one, uh, an AABA form, uh, and we can think of it maybe as most clearly related to something like um, Lady Madonna or um, going back to an earlier style like something like I Will did um, on, on the White Album. Um, Octopus's Garden, the Ringo song uh, we already talked about with regard to uh, um, his... Um, his uh, 
being inspired by the, uh, the habits of uh, octopuses or octopi, whatever the plural of that is, uh, at the bottom of the ocean. And then John's, I want you, she's so heavy, uh, which we'll spend um, more time talking about in the next video. So as we look over side one, just to kind of get an overview of that side that was put together, because that's the way John Lennon uh, wanted it to go, we get six very different and very contrasting tunes, in, all of which, um, when we, especially when I, uh, when I try to make these connections with regard to Maxwell Silverhammer and I Want You, uh, all of these really reach back and connect up with so many other things the Beatles have done up to this point. When we listen to those, look at those songs together, uh, come together, something, Maxwell Silverhammer, Oh Darling, Octopus's Garden, and I Want You, She's So Heavy. So in the next video, let's take a much closer look at Here Comes the Sun, Maxwell Silverhammer, and I want you, she's so heavy.